The next software title here is one I'm actually pretty intrigued by. Uh, I picked it up on my last trip to Goodwill during the Eclipse trip, and it is called Paint, Write, and Play. It's from the Learning Company. So this is a edutainment software in theory. That's what the Learning Company did. Uh, I think they put out like Reader Rabbit games and that sort of thing. But this one looks for all the world like it's probably sort of a office suite for toddlers. It says ages four to seven and it really looks like it probably has a word processor in it. I'm hoping this is actually a serious word processor just for kids, you know? I, I can imagine them having made that despite all expectations. So let's go ahead and get it in there and see what we got. Okay, here we go. I've turned my audio on and I highly anticipate that there will be audio in the installer. It seems like the sort of thing they would do. Strangely for the time, it complained about not having a 256 color graphics adapter, but didn't actually prevent me from installing. That's kind of weird. Also, this program is actually intended for Windows 3.1, so um, I'm going to go ahead and run it here because I don't have my audio working in Windows 3.1 right now, and it probably does have audio. Uh, oh, wow, it's going to try and restart Windows now for WinG to be enabled. Uh, my recollection is that was actually a... I think it was an extension for Windows 3.1, so obviously I don't need that, but I'm just going to let it restart because I don't want to interfere with this. Okay, well, it looks like it actually did mess with the Windows setup, so hopefully it didn't trash anything. All right, here we go. Yep. I actually remember that that splash screen was used in a lot of other software from them. Welcome to Paint, Write, and Play. Oh, that hedgehog is super cute. It's going to give Sonic a run for his money. Wow, I am staggered. That was really, really charming. <laughs> I think if I had this as a kid, I probably would remember that character very clearly. I, I, I think I would fondly remember that hedgehog, um, probably more than some other hedgehogs I might remember. Look, I'm not dragging Sonic. It's just there can be other hedgehogs. That needs to be how context help works in every application. If you want to work on a book you've already started, click here on the book cart where the old books are. Do you want to start off by writing? Click on the writing house. Mostly this is good, but the inflection on some of these so far is a little strained. Where the old books are is, is kind of... It's a little off. Okay, so let's try and write a book. Let's go to the writing, writing house. house coming up. Wow. Wow, this is something else. Are you seeing this? Wow, this interface. I, I'm not sure what to think. Is this a paragraph? Well, I guess uh, I should probably get to typing. Okay, so... Yeah, um, I started typing. This text looks absolutely fantastic, I should note. It, it's it's anti-aliased, uh, which I really wouldn't have expected for the era, but on, honestly, this UI doesn't look half bad. I might actually exit and change it to 640 by 480 because I think it's supposed to be 640 by 480 But, um, oddly, it seems to have locked me to this very, very small page size. Oh, you know what? This area is for art. Okay... I should note, it's streaming all this off the disk. Every time I, I sort of do anything, uh, it's spinning the disk up and, and doing a bunch of stuff. So that's kind of unusual. I mean, for a game, that's not surprising. And I guess this is sort of like a game. It's just because it's hybridized with an application, I kind of expected to not have to rely on the CD so much. But being that everything is bitmaps, I, I guess it does make sense. Now, this is interesting. What it's actually done here is I'm still in the text editor, but now... I can edit only this section up here where the art goes. 
So yeah, that's that's the idea is that you can actually draw your art directly where it's going to appear on the page. So this is meant to make picture books, not not you know novels. Yellow. And yeah, everything is streaming off the disc. So the 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 CD-ROM is spinning pretty good right now. But watch where I roll over green. Green. CD-ROM spun up and loaded that WAV file. Now if I do it again, it still has that one loaded. So it caches it in memory. But now if I go back to yellow. Okay, it seems like it might still have that one too, unless it's just streaming it off the disc better. It's definitely very, very delayed though. Let's try and draw a sun here. Yellow. Okay, so uh, I'm a terrible artist, especially with a mouse. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of some of this. Ugh. I don't know why the eraser makes that sound. That's a very disgusting sound. I really like that they've characterized all of this very, very viscerally in things that, uh, you know, a kid would understand. Uh, it's not just different sizes abstractly. It's, hey, this this one here is a little eraser. It's it's the little, little pointed one that you'd use for detail work. This is a normal pencil eraser. Um, this is a, a big, fat specialty pencil eraser, like one of those retractable ones that you, you might have seen when you were a kid. And then this is your great big, um, uh, your great big pink trapezoid one. Oh, okay, I wonder what that was. It's a squeegee. You just squeegee the whole page off. Okay, I'm going to try something that's probably not going to work. I'm going to try an Alt-Tab and change resolution. Yep, it doesn't understand that I changed it. So I'm going to go ahead and exit and reopen it. I just accidentally clicked on the travel center, so let's see what that is. get gas tires here. Ooh, let's go diving in the ocean. So I've been exploring this part of the program for a while, the travel center, and I can't for the life of me figure out what the heck it's supposed to be. So if I click on one of these scenes, I get to see the scene. Ooh, let's blast off to Mars. Okay, so here I'm on Mars, or I'm heading to Mars, I guess, and I can look around, but then there's this word list over here, and I can't figure out what it does. I can click on these, but they don't seem to do anything, and... Toilet. Toilet. Control panel. Oh, I see. So, I guess when I click on things in the scene... Kitchen. Kitchen. Okay, I guess I can click and I can put those into the word list. Yeah, okay, so when I click on different parts of the image, it, it puts those words in my word list, and I guess that's just a, a recognition thing, which is fine, but I guess I don't really understand what this is getting me. Um, most of this program seems pretty sensible, but that one seems strange. Also, periodically, when I scroll through this list, notice I get this B. Maybe that's a spelling B. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I, I don't understand what the purpose of this really is. Like, that was a, a cute animation of a dude taking a dump, but uh, I don't really I don't really see the value. Even more strangely, if I click these links down here, they take me to uh, just plain old word lists. Yes. Something. But I, I can't get definitions or anything. It doesn't give me an explanation of these words and, or, or how they relate to the image or anything, so I don't see what the value is there. And again, I can do the same thing here. Choose a word from the ABC picture word list. See, here we go. We've got words, but they're not re they're not related to what's in the image, so I don't get what this program is for. Okay, so it seems to have brought over the words I got in the uh, travel center, so can I put these... Oh! Okay, now this is making more sense. It doesn't give me a complete dictionary over there, which is a little strange, uh, and there's no definitions for words, but at least I now understand why they were doing this. And this is some sort of, like, rich text composer, because... Yeah, that's that's actually um, that's an image that's embedded in the text. Can I copy paste that? Actually, can I copy paste anything? Well, I can't do it that way anyway. Let's see. Uh, I can't right click. Yeah, I'm not sure what this button does. Uh, there's just a. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. There's text to speech. I wonder if it's Windows text to speech. Let's do the old test. Double 
Well, no, I'm sorry. They, they certainly wouldn't have had a Windows 3.1, which is what this was intended for. So, yeah, it runs on Windows 3.1. So, yeah, it's got to be a built-in text-to-speech synthesizer because I'm quite positive that Windows 3.1 didn't have that. John Madden. Mark. 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 Uh, let's try and reopen that book that I had, because that seems to have gone away. Okay, so I couldn't figure out how to reopen my book from within the writing house, so I'm just going to go ahead and go out to the main town square here and open it from there. Click to the store you want to open, then click OK. Okay, so it seems like it loaded it into this entire application, but I have to actually enter here or there to work on it. I'd say that's a little vague, but okay. By the way, I'm using the name of one of my patrons uh, who has generously sent me a CD of games to review, which I'm pretty excited about, but that's not going to be in this episode. As I promised, we're over the $5 donation level. I'm curious about these buttons over here on the right. Do these just insert punctuation? Comma. This is weird. Uh, the first time I clicked this, it said comma, and now it uh, just plays a sound effect. Oh, okay. Question mark. All right, it's on rollover. <laughs> oh no, I didn't know that was a punctuation mark. Is this for making manga? <laughs> this is um, this is some symbolic terminology I wasn't aware of. Okay, so let's see what it looks like when we change the text size. Wow. So you can change the text size, but you can't make it bold or italic, it looks like. I don't see a way to do that. Okay, I also want to see what we have down here. Let's click on this hot dog. H. Again, we have access to that same sort of uh, pseudo dictionary. Hot dog. They've used a different voice actor for all of the uh, dictionary entries. Okay, so I guess this adds a page, that removes a page. Uh, this makes a book, and I'm very curious to see what that's about, but we'll get there. And I've discovered that this button, this button, and this button are shortcuts to the other sections of the program. So the travel center, the art program, uh, and the uh, town square. Okay, so here in the art studio, um, let's go back to the first page. All right, so let's go ahead and get ourselves a scene here. Ocean. Okay, that's going to be our sky. All right, now there's no option for drawing shapes as far as I can tell. I'm very curious what the uh, glue bottle is supposed to represent. Oh, okay, that's copy and paste. All right. We don't seem to be able to draw any sort of shapes here, as far as I can tell. Oh, and that's interesting. You can pick from three different palettes. Okay, and then is this an undo? Yes, it is. This is my very, very bad bedroom that I've drawn, and I'm not even going to try drawing a person here because I'm definitely not up to snuff to compete with this program. Okay, finally, uh, I want to see what what's this about. There's these patterns down here. Uh, these look kind of cute, so... Brick. Let's see if we can actually make bricks. Okay, very good. I'm satisfied with this. So yeah, this this is neat. Um, I'm I'm fairly impressed by some of the features here. Oh, there's also there's a stamp feature here. A squirrel just chilling under the bed here. And uh, oh, actually, uh, do we have any sleepy animals that we can put up here? Because that seems a oh, there's a pupper. He's probably sleepy. Also, uh. Modula has a bucket to keep fish in, and there's a chest here at the foot of the bed to keep treasures in. What's this do? You know, that's probably a flip, uh, flip option. Let's see. Yes, it is. Only flips in the horizontal axis. Oh, a big boy. Oh, an even bigger boy. A small boy. 
Uh, you know, I kind of have the feeling those are Windows meta files because that was a scalable format that would have been popular at the time. Oh, so when you click on these big ones down here, they get imposed right away. Oops. All right, well, uh, let's put this huge terrifying bird in here. And Oh, cool, and there's pictures to go with all the words. So we can put this... Uh, Oh no, he's this boy is enormous. Ah, oh, he's no. I don't need a boy that big. There we go. He's just down there, just peeking in. Like, what's up? All right, we're done here. Uh, let's go ahead and fill these boys in. Oh, perfect. Yes, there we go. That's a crocagator. That's what we were looking for. Let's make this a let's make this a melon cat. Melon kitty and the infinite sadness. All right, so this is the hell world that Modulo woke up in. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, now that's cute. There's actually there's actually space back there, so I, I can put this wherever I want. Okay, so I think we've covered everything this program can do. Let's try and make a book. Okay, so I'm guessing that's cover. Cover. Table contents. Title page. Oh, title page. Dedication page. How oh, nice of them. Background for your picture. Oh, okay, and I missed this completely. There's actually uh, pre made backgrounds. Well, you tell me, was that the canonical pronunciation of your name? Anyway, you're also in the category of donor that gets your name in the program, so there you go. And then the last person who's donating to me and gets their name in the program is just named a boy, so you're just gonna get a boy. Thank you, a boy. All right, so that application was. Not what I had hoped for, but basically what I had expected. You know, it's a, a purpose-built sort of crayon for making the sort of books that a five-year-old would want to make. And that's fine, and the fact of the matter is there are probably a number of kids who've printed out some picture books that they're pretty pleased with, uh, especially considering how many different stamps there were in there. You can make some pretty complex images with that. Um, there was a, a fair amount of flexibility, so... I feel like, despite the fact that program was intended for very small children, that the learning company really put their backs into making it something that was going to be fun to use. And I think the fact they actually, you know, commissioned animated cartoon characters to help you out, or I, I guess just the one. There was really only one in there. But uh, it was a very charming character, and I, I think that probably it would have made fit kids feel pretty comfortable using the app, just getting in there and, you know, seeing a familiar face, as it were. I do think there were too many noises. I, I, I feel like probably that would have been really distracting to me as a kid, and also my parents would have thrown the computer into the water. I mean, yeah, I could have used headphones, but I don't know. It seems like somehow no one ever plugged headphones into a computer when I was a kid. It was always speakers. Anyway, it wasn't what I had hoped, which was a secret office suite that was way too good for its intended purposes and, you know, sort of something that inadvertently recreated Office and did a better job at it than Office did. Still, though, like, it was very, very hard to make any reasonable art. I mean, I'm not actually that bad of a visual artist. I'm bad, like, I, I'm not an artist, but I can draw better than that. It's just that it was incredibly difficult to just control the cursor. It, it's like it was getting away from me, and I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but just when you try to use these really, really, really kid-friendly art programs, it's very hard to make any serious art in them. You don't want to put a kid in front of a painter. You, know, you don't want to put them in front of a grown-up professional grade paint program but at the same time like I, I feel like they probably could have given me slightly better tools than that I mean in the paint program the only thing that I had other than stamps was a thin line and a thick line there was no ability to draw lines at angles uh, there was no ability to do um, there's no spray can uh, there was nothing like that so that's pretty disappointing I'd, I'd hoped for better tools in that regard but all in all that was a fun program and I'm not really disappointed